Hello, hello, BFFs. Welcome to Folklore Friday. I'm Katina from BFF Beauty, and this is where we get together. I kind of just throw some makeup on and um, discuss some things that I have found out around Colorado, some crazy stories around Colorado. And more and more, when I get into this, I'm realizing that these really are crazy stories of Colorado, more so than just local folklore. Like, the things that go on in Colorado are a little strange, honestly. So today's story is about Emma Crawford. Now, Emma Crawford was born March 24th, 1863 in Massachusetts and she was somewhat of a musical marvel now her mother was a piano teacher but by age three she could play the piano just as well and they said that her most beloved and cherished toy was her piano so age three she's like nah I don't want to play with dolls and so forth. I want to be on my piano. That's all I care about. That's what I want. That's where my life is, hanging out and having a good time on my piano. And of course, everybody just listened to her because what three-year-old plays the piano? That's amazing. So she started getting sick around age seven, just various illness. It doesn't really state what her illnesses were and it doesn't talk a lot about her father so i'm not sure if maybe her father died or what but it was it talks a lot about her and her mother i know there were some siblings but um doesn't really i really haven't gotten a lot of information on the whole family works other than her mother was madame jeanette crawford and she was a musical teacher and she taught the piano so so by age 12, she herself was teaching piano lessons to neighborhood kids. Um, by age 15, she was giving concerts in Boston with world-renowned cellists and violinists. She was quite a musical marvel, though she attributes all of her musical mastery to a spirit guide, an Indian spirit guide. Her and her family were part of a spiritualist society and they believed that they had an Indian spirit guide from the spirit world leading them through this world. So she attributes all of her musical mastery to that. She also played the violin, the viola, the cello, and the mandolin in her time away from playing the piano. So she was quite an amazing and accomplished young lady by the time she was 15. Just amazing. And that was in um, she played concerts in Boston in 1878. So, you know, she was she was pretty accomplished, and they always made comments about how delicate and tender her hands were for the sound that was coming out of her. Um, she never, ever took a lesson by human hands, though. So, I mean, that's that's pretty amazing, and that, that was her life, but she was also very sick. So the poor girl, she has this amazing musical talent, and she's very ill as well. So they determined in 1889 that she had tuberculosis and that the healing properties of Colorado is what she needed, the hot springs, the mountain air, the just healing properties of Colorado. Now, lots of people over the years have said Colorado had healing properties because of that, and the Indians really believed it too. So she and her mother and family moved to Manitou Springs in 1889. <clears throat> they rented a two-story frame house with bay windows and a gable roof, so it's told. And this was on what was then called Ute Avenue. So Ute Avenue is now called Capitol Hill Avenue. I'm looking for my eyebrow pencil. All right, it's now called Capitol Hill Avenue, but it was Ute Avenue when she lived there. She was engaged to a man named William Hildebrand, and he was an engineer from New York, so they had money. Um, he was working on the Pikes Peak Cog Railroad while they were here. So everybody was here, they all moved here they all were staying here, and things seemed to be going pretty well for a couple years. She seemed like she was maintaining. They were making a name for themselves in Manitou Springs. Everybody loved her musical talent. Her mother was teaching piano lessons. 
her soon-to-be husband, her betrothed, is working in this big company, building this railroad. One of the most important things to how the West was won, the railroad. Very, very important situation out here. So to be part of that meant that you were going to have some money. It was going to be, or that you already did. So she seemed like things were going well. She was doing well, getting better. Things were going well. But nature was Emma's second love next to music. So she really loved to be out at the mountain. She loved to see the mountain. She loved to be part of the mountain situation. Um, she made friends with people in town. She was becoming quite popular. And one of the friends that she made was a teenage boy. And his name was Bill Crosby. William Crosby. And William Crosby, just a teenager at the time, his whole family were friends with the Crawford family. Um, he said that Emma had fancied that she saw a handsome young Indian buck spirit up on the summit of Red Mountain. So... She felt she was supposed to go up there to see this Indian spirit. I had to back up there for a second and prime my eyes. I almost forgot. So she that she had to go up on this hill and meet or up on the mountain, climb to the summit of Red Mountain from Manitou Springs and meet this Indian spirit that she said was summoning her up there. Well, her fiance, her family, her friends, her mother thought it was a bad idea and forbid her to do it. So one day, while her mother was giving a piano lesson to the neighbor, she snuck out the door and climbed Red Mountain. Now she got back pretty late that night and nobody believed that she had actually climbed Red Mountain. But she told everyone she definitely did and that she had hung her scarf in the tree, in an old pinion tree up there. And um, then she told her fiance that the spirit guide told her that is where she was supposed to be buried and she would forever be remembered. So the next day, her little friend Bill Crosby decided to climb up to the summit and see how true her story was. And sure enough, he found her scarf tied to a pinion tree, so she made that trek all the way up there. Now, she was delicate. She was sick. She was delicate. She was in no shape to climb a mountain. So what do you think happened to her? She died a couple days later. She died. And her wonderful fiancé wanted to have her buried by the tree and he tried to get the deed to the property there to be able to bury her there and could not get it but this was her dying wish so they did it anyway she died 10 30 at night on december 4th 1891 and they had her funeral service in the home and they buried, they went to bury her by the tree anyway. Now this, the paper of course got a hold of the funeral service and went there and saw it. And they said that only family close acquaintances and votaries of the faith were there. Votaries of the faith are referring to the Society of Progressive Spiritualists of Colorado Springs. So that's the society that they were then a part of. And there was a reverend that led the service, Reverend A.R. Kiefer, and he was a minister of the Spiritualist Society. So the paper wanted to go see this service, and they said that it was unusual, an unusual but impressive service, peculiarly, peculiar, peculiarly sweet music with a weird harmony as her mother played the piano at her funeral service. So that is the story. I mean, a little bit weird there, huh? So on December 8th, 1891, four days later, so four days of mourning, they two shifts of pallbearers carried her coffin up to this tree and buried her there. <clears throat> um, her her friend Bill Crosby was there and his god grandfather 
actually was one of the pallbearers that carried the coffin up. So <laughs> he, f he had a statement to make about it. He said, they buried Emma on the mountaintop beneath an ugly un windswept tree. They covered her grave then in stones. Her fiance looked like a stricken man beside that grave. End quote. Now, fast forward. There was a severe rainstorm in Manitou Springs. And in the summer of 18 or 1929, the severe thunderstorm, rainstorm, in August 4th, these two young boys were playing in their backyard out behind their residence and they found the skull of a woman or a skull of a human and so they got the police involved and the police came and looked. They found a bundle of human remains, they found a coffin handle, and they also found the nameplate from Emma's coffin. So Emma had washed down and they took her remains to City Hall. Now, the coroner said he did not have jurisdiction over her body because it was buried up on Red Mountain Pass. And there within City Hall, her remains stayed for two years. She did not like funerals. She was not cool with formalities. She did not want to be buried in a cemetery. That was the whole reason she was buried up on the hill, other than the spirit guide saying that if she was buried there, she would never be forgotten. So Manitou Springs spent two years looking for family members to claim her body then. And in 1931, her good old family friend, Bill Crosby, springs up and says, I'll take care of her body. And he then had it buried at the Crystal Cemetery. So that all being said, she's still buried in a cemetery where she didn't want to be. But at least she was taken care of, right? Well, over the years... The story has gotten out that basically there was a rainstorm and she came plummeting down the mountain in her coffin, smashing to bits at the bottom, which has prompted now, as of 1993, a memorial festival, the Emmer Crawford Memorial Festival in Manitou Springs, where they have coffin races. So this is the second town who glorifies somebody's death by coffin races, where they, it's like derby cars and they race down, race each other and try to stay, you know, intact in their coffin car. So the craziest part of this whole story is that they now have a memorial festival for her. And in 2004, they actually gave her a memorial on her unmarked grave, a, a headstone. So she is now forever remembered, just like her spirit guide said she would be. Crazy, right? So also along this whole situation, her spirit guide tells her that she's going to be remembered forever. She comes washing down the hill. They forever have a memorial festival in her honor. And she's forever remembered, right? How did they know this? How This is insane. It's insane. The spiritualist society that she was a part of has expanded and now become a spiritualist cult in Colorado. So there's something to be said about this whole situation, but we'll get into that next week. That will be next week's topic in crazy Colorado stories. So let's think about this for a second. She comes racing down the hill. Nobody forgets her, just like her spirit guide said, and she was part of a spiritualist society. So that's crazy, y'all. I want to find out a little more about this spiritualist society. It's just a little weird to me. So... I believe that's going to be next week's topic for Folklore Friday, a.k.a. Crazy Stories of Colorado. I want to find out about this spiritualist society and cult love cult that apparently is still going on today. It has morphed into something absolutely insane and crazy from what I understand. So let's touch base on that. Let's see what's going on there. Let's see what kind of truths can be had from the spiritualist society, y'all. So that's it for today. Check out Manitou Springs. Check out Emma Crawford's memorial. Maybe check out a coffin race. Thanks for watching Folklore Friday. Have a wonderful week and BFFs. See y'all next week.